group therapy sessions. Yay! Mass released in 2021 and is directed and written by Fran Krantz, who made his feature-length directorial debut with this film. He's mainly known for being an actor, and you probably know him more as being the nerdy, smart guy from the movie Cabin in the Woods, if you have seen that film. But if this movie is any indication of the writing and directorial prowess that this person has, my god, I hope he continues directing for many years to come, because this was such a beautiful movie. And it's a small contained ensemble cast of Jason Isaacs, Reed Burney, Martha Pimpton, and Ann Dowd. And the reason why we're talking about Mass today is because it was a PayPal recommendation and donation from a contributor and supporter of this channel. It's actually been a while since I've heard from them, but this is from Ben Knox. Ben, thank you so much for recommending this amazing, wonderful, beautiful, sad movie. If anyone else out there also wants to be like Ben and help support me and contribute to this channel, you can select the QR code that is in the bottom left corner of your screen right now. Send over a donation with your movie recommendation. Any size donation will do. And if I have access to it, I will watch it, review it, and give you a little shout out, just like what I did with Ben here. And like Ben, again, what I said, this movie took me by surprise. I knew nothing going into this about what this would be about, what the setting was, who these characters are. And I was taken on such a wonderful cathartic <laughs> journey that uh, was absolutely beautiful. This movie is magnificent. Richard and Linda finally meet with Jay and Gail Perry at a small community room at an Episcopal church, where all four of them discuss the tragedy involving both of their sons. And I'm stopping right there with a plot synopsis. The less you know about this film, the better. I knew nothing. All Ben sent me with his recommendation was that this movie reads like a play, and it absolutely does. This is so close. It's the closest thing you could get to a theatrical going experience. I could see this movie being produced in a small black box theater where the audience is very close to the actors on stage. It was a very intimate setting and everyone I would feel would be like a part of the whole experience. I don't know if this would work well in a proscenium space, like a big theater where the seating is on one side. If you're in a black box theater, you can condense that down in like a thrust space where you have audience members on on multiple sides of the stage and you just have actors walking back and forth doing their blocking saying their monologues and you have the potential of getting a very raw experience from these actors performing these monologues and these continuous scenes on stage i think this movie should be a play i was shocked to find out that this is not a theatrical play like this is an original idea from the director and it went directly to film how this movie is not in production to be converted or adapted for the stage i have no idea it absolutely lends itself to get on that right now maybe i should make it my life's work to turn this work into a theatrical play because my god this is it's dialogue driven it's all talking right there's no action set pieces. There's no establishing shots of beauty or focusing on something and it's a metaphor and it represents something else. No, it's just four people sitting around a table talking slowly, talking about very horrific events that happen in all of their lives. And the writing in here, just, it gives me goosebumps because I, I've taken several playwriting classes and just the way that a writer goes about delivering information to the audience who is watching, here it's done masterfully. And how it just like slowly throws out information. Not like in your face and spoon feeding you, just a little comment here or just a little nugget there and in the back of your mind you're wanting to figure out before you finally officially figure out what happens but you're trying to figure out okay like well, something bad happened here they're both sets of parents so i'm going to assume something happened with a child of theirs oh now they're showing pictures of their kids okay and they're speaking about some of their kids in the past tense so thinking that a tragedy happened, and that's, I'm almost spoiling it there. The less you know, the better. And the movie is a masterclass 
in acting. This is all subtlety work. You're not there you're performing like Shakespearean monologues. You're not being overly dramatic. You're not being big, as a term we use in the theater, to emote and show all of your emotions and your acting abilities to the people in the nosebleed section. No, you are natural. This is a very natural film. These performances are very naturalistic in form. Let's just have four characters sit around a table and have a conversation. And the feelings that are felt, the things that are said, all feel natural. Yes, these would be things that you talk about in a situation like this. And the responses and the reactions to things that are being said are valid responses and valid things that are being said. It just does my heart so good to see a realistic and naturalistic theatrical piece. Even though this is a film and it's not based on a play, this is theatrical. And this is the beauty of what theater is, to have... A cathartic experience like this, where you have four people experiencing emotion that is so tremendous, but therapeutic in a way. Like, you need to go through this. You have to emote all of these pent-up <laughs> aggressions and pent-up emotions that you've been burying and you've been trying to keep yourself professional. But then at points during these conversations, you just break down and you just get raw and you completely emote what you're emoting because, you know what? In this situation, you are 100% allowed to do so. And the tragedy that happens in here is, it's unbearable. And to be the parents of both sets of kids in that situation, I couldn't even imagine. And everyone in here has several moments to shine. Everyone has at least, at least one monologue. Some get multiple monologues, but everyone gets at least one gigantic monologue to help them showcase that, okay, me as the actor, I get this guy. I get this character, and here's the reasons why. Here's the reason why this character is in this specific moment at this specific point in time. Reed Bernie probably, compared to the other three, probably has the least showy emotion in this film, but that's who this character is. He is stern, he is very sheltered, he is a businessman, and he doesn't like losing himself or emoting or showing weak emotion because that would mean that he is not a strong man. So he doesn't show as much as the other three do, but again, still, the monologues that we get from him I think are wonderful, and he plays this hard, stern, sheltered person to a T. Martha Pimpton, who the entire time sitting down like, I know I've seen her before. I have seen that face before. Where do I know this person from? And then go back, you know, 30 years and she was one of the Goonies. Of course, that's where I know her from. The second I, I saw that, I was like, all oh, right, yep. Uh, you have been a part of my childhood for a very long time. Now I know where you're from. Again, another very raw performance here from her beautifully delivered monologues and moments of clarity, moments of hatred, moments of sadness, moments of grief. It's all just beautiful from her. Jason Isaacs is also here, and my, that man and his American accent is freaking incredible. He is a British actor, and a lot of British actors like really enunciating the consonants in a lot of words here with an American accent, but how he just blends it all together, it, it sounds so natural. I like You watch him for the first time in this movie, and you would think he's American. Great moments from him as well. I always think of him in action films where he is stern. He is that stereotypical male character who's always badass and is always angry and is always appearing that he is strong in his conviction. So to see Jason take those archetypes and try to put that into this character, but then to see this character break down and have those weak moments. I, I'm not I'm going to say weak, I'm going to say vulnerable moments where he is crying or he hears music and you can see that it's literally touching his soul. Like you can actually see that on screen of how uplifting he is feeling after being down in the dumps the entire movie. I'm a sucker for that stuff. I like seeing like hard men be broken down and be vulnerable in movies like this. It was a beautiful performance. Another beautiful performance. But probably the most beautiful was Ann Dow's performance as the mother of, uh, uh, I almost spoil it again. Another a mother here. I'm not gonna, god, I really want to spoil it, but I'm not going to, because I want you to experience this film. She has the closing monologue. She has the light moments, but you can tell that there's just so much pain behind her and so much misunderstanding or at least searching for understanding with what happened with this whole situation with her son and their son. There's confusion, there is love, there is anger, there is fear, 
there's she just does such a beautiful job here and even the side characters the extras who come in and they're like oh we're setting up the room and oh yeah there's choir singing that's not gonna be a problem right even they were fantastic this film is a master class in acting if I was teaching an acting class, I would have every single one of my students watch this movie. And it's simple. It's just people talking. There's not much sound. There's not much music to it. When you do finally hear music, especially at the end, it it just grabs hold of your heart and it brings tears to your eyes. I had tears in my eyes. And there are some wonderful sound effects in here. Really, they're, like there's absent of sound. It's all just dialogue. But there are points in here, particularly with Jason Isaac's character, when he starts feeling rage, you start hearing this drumming, this heartbeat, this bass sound that I thought like there was a truck driving outside my window because I had my headphones on while listening to it. And I'm like, what? what is that? Oh, it's the sound design. It was, it got me because there was really no sound design with this movie other than like these few couple little parts. Mass is a tremendous film. I'm a sucker for dialogue heavy theatrical pieces like this again even though this is not based on a play it definitely should be hopefully it is adapted later on down the road this is a beautiful story it's a horrific story but the performances in here are magnificent i absolutely love this movie thank you so much ben for nominating this one i'd never heard of it and i probably would have clicked over it just seeing a generic poster like this with four faces on the poster with the letters carved out in their face but man, this is beautiful. I love this movie. This was great. I'm going to give Mass five out of five Blu-rays. I think I see blue. He looks glorious. So guys, if you've seen Mass, what did you think about it? Or if you've never seen it before and you stumbled across because of this video, then comment below. Let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell so you know the next time I release next movie review. So guys, I will see you next time on the channel. But in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.